Hebrews 11, verse 1, the title of this message is Faith is the Key to Miracles. And so next Sunday we begin our Daring Faith campaign. It will be six weeks to challenge and stretch your faith. And so your faith is going to grow like it never has before. And the result will be is that you'll begin to get answers to your prayers and you'll have a stronger walk with Christ. And, and so faith is, is so key to us receiving from God because we use faith to receive everything that we need from God, whether that's finances or healing or uh, divine protection, anything that we receive from God, we, we receive that through faith. You know, I've heard, you know, some of the best faith teachers in the nation, and my brother's a faith specialist, and I've really been ministered uh, to him, from him a lot. And uh, so, I've, you know, I've heard that, but I'm excited about this campaign that I'm going to I'm going to learn more, and I'm going to get into the Word and, and really strengthen my faith. And so you can, too, as you participate in the campaign. Yeah. And so the Bible says that uh, those who come to God must believe that He rewards those who seek Him. So we're going to teach you what faith is and how to trust God to be a rewarder of the things that you need in life. And, and so let's first of all, let's talk about what faith is not. Faith is not desire. It's not just wishing and hoping. If, if God answered everybody's wishes, then there'd be no needs in the world. But God is moved by faith, not just desire. The Bible says he'll give us the, the desires of our heart, yet we still must exercise our faith to be able to receive those desires. And, and so faith is not a feeling, because feelings come and go with the weather and how the bank statement looks. Uh, you know, we're determined your feelings. So faith is not a feeling. Some folks say, well, I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Well, that's great, but that's not faith. Because tomorrow you may have a feeling that everything's going to be wrong. But that's not faith either. So we're not moved by feelings. We're not moved by the way things look, but we're moved by the Word of God. And we walk upon the Word of God and not how we feel. Because sometimes you feel good, sometimes you feel bad, but it doesn't really matter. You don't veer off course because your faith is in the Word of God. So Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. One translation says, Faith is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen and to be certain of the things that we do not see yet. And so faith is seeing things from God's point of view. Yeah. Faith is having God's vision. So many, time, so many times in life we're <laughs> limited by our lack of vision. And, yeah. you know, you cannot possess what you cannot see. And so God has to open your eyes so that you can see more, so that you can believe him for more, and so that you can receive more. Ephesians 1.18, uh, Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be flooded with light so that you can see the wonderful future that God has promised to those he called. Can you see a wonderful future that God has promised to you? If you can't see a wonderful future for your life, you need to get in the word of God and understand the promises of God and be able to release your faith on those promises because God wants good things for you. Come on, his plans for you are good, to prosper you, to bring you to a good end, to bring you to an expected end. That's God's will for you. Amen. But you have to see that and be able to receive that by faith. There's a story in the Bible of, of one time the village, the prophet Elisha was standing in the village and that village was surrounded by the Syrian army who had come to get him. And, and so his servant, uh, Gehazi, was afraid. Gehazi looked out and he saw the, the massive Syrian army and he was afraid. And But Elisha, man, he was just calm and he was at peace. And, and so he prayed and said, God, open Gehazi's eyes so that he can see the angels. And God opened his eyes and he saw an angelic army that was bigger than the Syrian army. And so that's my prayer for us is that God open our eyes so that we can see the power of God, the angels of God, and the destiny that he has for us. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. And so if we see more, then we'll be able to receive more. Yeah. And so there's a story in the Bible about the children of Israel, and they, they finally get to the promised land. They've wandered in the wilderness, and they had to learn a lot of lessons, but finally they get to the, the edge of the promised land, and they're ready to go in. And so Moses sends in 12 spies to spy out the land so that they can plan their strategy to go into the land. And so the spies go out and, and they come back and they give a mixed report. And so Joshua and Caleb, 
come back and they give a good report. And they said the land flows with milk and honey and, and the grapes are as big as oranges and, and it's a wonderful place and, and we're well able to take it. Let's go up and, and possess the land. But 10 spies come back and they give a negative report. They say that, you know, the people are strong and the, the, the cities are, are fortified and there's giants there. And compared to the giants, we look like grasshoppers. And so they gave a negative report. And, and so uh, Joshua and Caleb, everybody remembers the name of Joshua and Caleb, but nobody can recall the names of the ten spies who gave the negative report. Yeah. But they gave a report that was full of fear. And so when you look at... When you look with eyes of fear, it keeps you out of your promised land. Yeah. When you look with eyes of fear, you exaggerate your problems. And God had just delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. It was Egypt was the mightiest uh, nation on the face of the earth. And he had delivered them from the Egyptian army. And yet they're afraid of a, a few tribes. Come on, people who are much weaker. Because they begin to see with eyes of fear. The same thing is true in your life. You'll begin to look at some of the problems you have when you see with eyes of fear. You'll look at the problems that you have and you will exaggerate those problems so much that you think that it's a mountain that cannot be removed. Come on, and that's what happens when you see with eyes of fear. And so you lose hope. And uh, the, re the report of the majority of spies was a negative report. And, you know, most of the people give a negative report. Most folks, you know, in the world see with eyes of fear. And all you have to do is just read the news, and you can see that. Yeah. Come on, let some little something happen, and people will take will take a molehill and make it into a mountain, yeah. and they'll begin to see with eyes of fear. But you know, there's there's uh, just a few folks who see with eyes of faith, but there's a whole lot a whole lot more doubters than there is believers. Yeah. And you know, the children of Israel were excited when they first got to the edge of the promised land, but when they heard a negative report, they got fearful. And so when we see with eyes of fear, we underestimate our own abilities. Yeah. And so they said, we look like grasshoppers in our own sight. Yeah. In other words, they had low self-esteem. They had a low self-image, and they began to see themselves as just a bug. Yeah. And they saw themselves as being helpless. And they said, compared to my problems, I'm, you know, I'm just a bug. I'm just a grasshopper. And, and so, so mm -hmm. some of you are here today, and people maybe have said things critical about you, and and things that weren't true, it was just their own opinion, yet you believe those things and you've let those things limit your life. And people say, well, you can't do this and you can't do that, and, and you're really limited as to what you can become because of your background or maybe, you know, uh, some type of uh, problem that you may have. But the Bible says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. And so our identity is not just in ourselves, but our identity is in Christ and who He is. And so in Christ are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Everything that we need is in Christ, and whenever we tap into Him, we tap into His ability. We tap into His power. We tap into His potential, and we can do things that we could not do on our own because we're connected to Christ. The Apostle Paul said, it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yeah. Come on, it's a Christ in you. It's you in Jesus. It's not just you alone. And you're never alone, but Christ is on the inside. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said, he said, when I'm weak, he said, then I'm strong. Yeah. Because Christ's strength is made perfect in my weakness. He said, what I am, what I, what I am not in myself, I am in Christ. Amen. 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 Greater, and so he said, the greater one lives on the inside of me. Yeah. Come on, the Holy Spirit is a greater one. Yeah. That means he's greater than any problem that you face. Yeah. Come on, any negative factor, yeah. anything that would stop you, the Holy Spirit is greater. Yeah. And the hard thing for us is to be aware of that and also act upon that truth, knowing that he's there on the inside of us. He's yeah. not off somewhere, but he's there on the inside of us working through our body. Amen. 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 Giving us the strength, giving us the ability that we need to overcome. Yeah. And so in your weakest moment, you can realize that the Holy Spirit is there. Come on, you're not limited by just what you have, but he's there working through you, and you can let him flow through your body and through your mind so that you can do the things that you need to do, the things that God has called you to do, yeah. that you're able to step out and do those things because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Because it's not by might, 
It's not by power. Come on, but it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. In other words, it's not by human effort and ability, but it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? And so when we see with eyes of fear, we get discouraged. Yes. Come on, and when you, you know, you face problems and you get in fear, then you're discouraged. And, and the children of Israel, when they heard the negative report, they begin to cry. And the Bible says they cried all night because of a fearful report. And so some folks, you know, have gloom, despair, agony upon me, deep, dark depression, excessive misery. And so they get discouraged because of the journey. The Bible speaks of the children of Israel and said they were discouraged because of the way. Yeah. Come on, there were some, some challenges that they had to face. And they, they went through a rough desert to get to the promised land. And they became discouraged. And so they really had a, just a giant pity party. No. Yeah. And, you know, the devil really has you when he, if he can get you into self-pity. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. poor me, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, things just hadn't worked out for me. Poor me. And, and life is unfair. And, no. You know, and things should be different. Blah, blah, blah. If you get into self-pity, the devil already has you whipped. Yeah. Yeah. I heard somebody say, he says, there are more demons at a pity party than there is at a booze party. Yeah. Come on, when, when, you're, when you're having a pity party... The devil is right there saying, poor you. Look at you. It worked for other people, but it's not going to work for you. Other folks got healed, but you hadn't got healed. Other folks were blessed, but you hadn't been blessed. And that's when you have to say, shut up, devil. Get behind me. Come on and begin to declare the promises of God. Come on and what God can do in you and what God can do through you. And they're not limited by just yourself. When people see with the eyes of fear, they begin to gripe and complain about their situation. Instead of having a thankful heart, instead of praising God, then they begin to complain. Oh, man, you know, this isn't fair and that isn't fair. And, and so the Bible says to the children of Israel that they wish they would have died in Egypt. How soon do people forget what they came out of? Come on, people forget what God has brought them out of. I've seen God bring people out of terrible things. And then they, you know, they start living for God and they realize they're actually going to have to do something to live and walk in victory. Come on, they're actually going to have to put forth an effort to live for God, you know, and go to church and pray and, and say no to temptation and things like that. And they realize actually that there is, there is a fight to faith and there's, you know, there's some challenges that you have to face. And so they just quit. And something that old devil lied to them and said, you know, you were better off back when you were a sinner. Well, that's a lie. They just forgotten. Yeah. Come on, they forgot how bad it was and what God had delivered them out of. Come on, but if you can think back to what God has taken you out of, if you can remember back to how far He has brought you from where you were, then you won't get discouraged, but you'll say, praise God, you brought me a long way. And if I ever start feeling sorry for myself, I just have to go visit a few folks. <laughs> And when I leave their house, I said, thank you, Jesus, that you have been good to me. I got a good steak to eat. Amen. A nice air conditioner in my house. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. Come on. Don't ever believe the lie. The devil will lie to you and say, oh, man. He'll try to get you to compare yourself to somebody, you know, that's way, way ahead of you or older than you or, or whatever. And try to get you to compare yourself to them. But don't compare yourself to other people. Yeah. Yeah. Because you'll make an unfair com comparison. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can always find somebody who's better off than you. You can always find somebody who's worse off than you. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, folks tend to compare themselves to somebody who's further along than them. And so you don't want to get discouraged. Amen. And feel sorry for yourself. But understand that if you're, if you're in a problem in a situation. And we do face problems in life. God can bring you out of that problem. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Just like he brought you out of the last problem. Ah, and if you think back on your life and you remember all the things that you've been through. So good. Come, on. come on, you forget about those things, but you remember all the things that you've been through. God brought you through every yeah. one of those yeah. things, yeah. and he'll bring you through what you're going Woo. through right now. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yes. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. And so don't drop and complain and get no. discontented. You know, well, some folks, are, their football team loses what? a few games, and they become a Cowboys fan. <laughs> Come on, the season, it's not.
not over yet. Don't hang the coat, the coat yet. And so, when people, when people look through eyes of fear, they get discouraged. And they say, man, we, or they quit. And they say, we'd be better off going back to Egypt. And they forget, you know, about what God has done for them. And they start talking about Egypt like it was, you know, some kind of fun place. And so there's, there's no freedom without taking risks. And so some folks would rather be a slave than face a challenge. Come on, but if you're going to have freedom, there's going to be some challenges. For instance, you can invest your money in the bank and make about half percent a year now, and your money will be safe. No doubt about it. Nobody will ever get that money. You'll be safe, but you'll likely never be financially independent unless you're investing a lot of money. Or you're already wealthy, you're just, you just want to keep it safe. But you'll likely never be financially independent. If you, want to, if you want to make money, you have to take a risk. And if you take a risk, there's a much higher, higher return than half a percent a year. And so you can sit in a pew and never be criticized. And never try to do anything for God and you'll never be criticized. But if you want to be more than you are right now, come on, you're going to have to step out and take some risks and do some things that you've never been able to do before or things that you never thought you could do. But it's going to take some faith to be able to step out and done it in the past. Don't let your self-image hold you back. Don't let your limitations hold you back. But step out and say, I'm going to take a risk for God. Amen? You have to do that. Praise God. And so when I see with eyes of faith, I shrink my problems. When I look at God from God's point of view, I gain a new perspective of things. And my problems don't look big anymore. And so when you have a big God, then your problems are small. But if you've got a small God, then your problems get real big. Come on, but whenever my faith is built up, Come on, I see a big God. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what praise and worship does. As I begin to praise Him and realize how big He is and how great He is. And when I begin to realize that, it renews my mind and suddenly my problems begin to look a whole lot smaller. And I realize that I've got a mighty God who can solve any problem that I have. If I'll put my faith and I'll put my trust in Him, He can bring me through that problem in the situation. And the Bible says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer is no, because nothing is impossible with God. Absolutely nothing. And if I can attach my faith to the promises of God and who God is, I can receive the answers to my prayers. Amen. When I see with the eyes of faith, I open the door for a miracle. And when miracles happen, it's not just by chance or that God likes one person more than he likes another. It's because somebody is exercising their faith. Somebody is making a demand upon God. Somebody is expecting God to move in their behalf. Mark 11, 23, 24 says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And so spiritual laws are greater than natural laws. Yeah. And spiritual laws rule the universe. Amen. Come on, like, like sowing and reaping and, and other spiritual laws. And, and so they, they determine what happens in the natural. Yeah. And so Jesus isn't praying for God to move the mountain, but he's commanding the mountain to move. Yeah. And he's doing that as an example for his disciples to teach them how to solve problems and how to move mountains. Right. And so Jesus is using his authority. And if you read the Gospels and you read about the ministry of Jesus, you will find out that he commanded things to change. Yes. Come on, he commanded the dead to rise. Yes. He commanded demons to come out. Yes. Come on, he commanded the storm to be still. Yes. And he did that as an example for his disciples and also for people's needs to be met. To be met. He used the authority that he had. Yes. And some folks say, well, that's Jesus. But yet he turned around. Yes. He said, I'm giving you authority. Yes. He said, you have power to use my name. Yes. In other words, you have power of attorney to use Jesus' name. Yes. If you give somebody power of attorney, it means that they have the authority to act in your behalf right. to be able to conduct your business. Yes. And so Jesus has given us power of attorney. We have delegated authority that has been 
given to us. And Jesus said, you'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. That power has been given to us. And so many times folks are just praying about something when they should be speaking the word of God yeah. over a situation yeah. and commanding the situation to change. Yeah. Praise God. That's the power that has been given to us. Yeah. Praise God. And then he said, what things we desire when we pray, he said, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Yeah. In other words, you have to believe that you have it before you get it, yeah. which goes against human nature and it goes against our senses because we tend to say, well, if I can see something, if I can touch it, if I can feel it, then it's so. But faith says it's so, and no matter what I feel like or, or what I, you know, or what I can see, it's so because the Word of God says it's so. This past summer, I hurt my knee, and I mean it hurt bad, you know. And I thought, well, maybe I've torn something, and and it was it hurt to walk, and and it was difficult. Some of you saw me; I was kind of limping around here for for a few weeks, but. And, you know, I could have went to the doctor, but I just asked God to heal me. And I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove that this is true on my own. And, I, you know, I'm not going to go to the doctor. Just ask God to, to heal my knee. And so, ask him to heal it. Well, nothing changed. You know, and, and uh, it still hurt. I just kept walking on it, saying, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. And went about my business. And, and so, uh, after a while, the pain left. Yeah. Come on, and now it feels like I can't tell any, that anything was ever wrong with my knee. But you know, there was a fight to it. I had to believe that I received before I ever received. In other words, I had to act in faith before I received my healing. And so many times, that's what hits folks. Because, you know, they're going to they're gonna say, well, you know, if it hadn't happened in a day or two, then it ain't going to happen. And there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor. I could have went to the doctor. You know, and I don't know what they what they would have done. I could have went to the doctor, and I do go to doctors and take medicine, and, and nothing wrong with that. But I just chose to let God heal me. Sure. And so there was a fight to it. I had to stand in faith and declare that I was healed. But in a period of time, I was healed. And let me tell you, it hurt bad. It wasn't just something small. No. But I mean, it hurt bad. And so, but God healed me, but I had to stand in faith. And so it's the same thing, whether it's healing or finances or anything else, believing that your child's going to be saved, you got to stand in faith and believe that it's done, even though you hadn't seen the answer or the manifestation yet. Amen. Come on? And believe that it's done. So some things never change until you stand in faith. And you know, you can go see Benny Hinn or somebody else and, and try to be healed off somebody else's gift. But, you know, if you learn to exercise your faith, you can be healed on your own. Yeah. Nothing wrong with getting prayer from other folks, but you can be healed on your own if you'll take the word of God and exercise your faith. The same thing with finances. Come on, you sow seed and, and nothing happens for a period of time. Give extra offerings. Maybe you gave to raise the roof. I know a lot of, a lot of folks have been given to raise the roof and praise God for that. I think we're down to, we need about $60,000. And uh, so I believe that that's, that's coming in. And back in June, we needed 101 or something like that. I'm not sure exactly. And so praise God for that. Some of you have given to raise the roof. And, and you know what? You may not see something immediately, but if you'll stand in faith and, and lift up your knees to God, you'll see a harvest that comes in. But there is a time lag in between sowing and reaping. Come on, there's a time lag in between asking God and receiving the manifestation. And in that time lag, you have to stand and walk in faith yeah. until you receive it. Amen? Yeah. And so God is developing our faith. You know, he makes us exercise our faith. You know, if you've got a, if you've got a baby, you treat them different than, than you would a 12-year-old or a 15-year-old. Yeah. With a baby, you know, you just give them everything that they want. And it's because they're a baby. But when they get a little bit older, you expect them to start doing some stuff yeah. for themselves, right? Yeah. And, you know, if they want money, you say, okay, work. Yeah. You know, if you want some money, you do this or you do that. And, and, uh, and so you expect them to grow up. And the same thing is true in, in our faith life. God expects us to exercise our faith and, and grow up. And sometimes you won't get any further in finances or healing or any other area in your life until you exercise your faith. Amen? Amen. And you say, man, I'm going to stand in faith until 
until I receive. Amen? Yes. I'm going to exercise my faith, and I'm going, I'm going to believe that the Word is true, yes. even though I may not feel like it right now, or even though it doesn't look like it right now. I'm just going to believe that the Word is true. I'm just going to believe that there is a God who answers prayer, yes. and He, come on, He's answered my prayer. And so you stand in faith for that. The Bible says that God will complete everything that concerns you. I believe when we get to heaven, we'll say, man, I didn't have to worry. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I should have not have worried as much as I did. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, you'll find out that God had everything covered. Yeah. Come on, and the things that, you know, that you worried about, God had already taken care of. It. Amen? Yeah. And so you can stand on the promises of God. And so we can command things to change. Remember in Beeville, we, we built a new church. And then we, they had the old church building. And old churches are hard to sell. And they've been trying to sell that thing for years. And, uh, and so it was time to build uh, the new auditorium. We already had one auditorium, education building. It was time to build a new auditorium. We really needed to sell that old church, put the money toward the new auditorium. And I mean, it had been sitting there for years. So I drove by there. It's the name of Jesus. I command you so. Well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too many weeks later till we had a contract on that thing. But, you know, I was talking to my dad on the phone. I said, yeah, we're believing God to sell this church. He said, well, drive by there and speak to it. Yeah. So I drove by there, and I spoke to it. I commanded it sold in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen? And things yeah. changed. And so there's power in faith and power in the words that you release. Yeah. And so when I see with the eyes of faith, I move God to act in my behalf. Yeah. Jesus said, according to your faith, so be it unto you. Come on, it's up to you. Yeah. Folks say, well, everything's up to God. No, not everything is up to God. God said, it's up to you. He said, it's according to your faith. Yeah. Whatever you can believe God for. Whatever you can believe God for, He can do and will do. Yeah. But we're the ones who limit God. No. Come on, with our, our lack of vision and our lack of faith. No. Come on, but if you can see more, if you can believe Believe for more than you can receive more. And so you get to choose how much God blesses your life. Come on, it's not up to your kid folks or your parents or your co-workers or anything else. You get to choose how much God blesses your life and it's according to your faith and what you can believe Him for. I can believe God for much bigger things today than I could 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Come on, I can give more freely than I could many years ago. Why is that? Because, man, I've seen, I've seen the Word of God come true. And whenever, you know, whenever you give, you're just, you know, you're sowing seed for a future harvest. You may not see it right away. Come on, but the harvest is going to come in. And so I can believe God for much more than I used to be able to believe Him for. And so faith grows and it expands as we step out. And so... God works in people's lives because they expect Him to. Yeah. Come on, I showed up at some appointments last week because somebody was expecting me. Yeah. They were expecting me there. You know, back when I used to have to uh, pay my children's way when they were in college and so on, you know, I gave them money. Why is that? Because they expected it. Yeah. They needed a certain amount every week. They were expecting it. Guess what? I sent it. Yeah. They were dependent upon me. And so God's the same way. Come on, He moves according to people's expectations and what they're expecting Him to do and what they are trusting Him to do. Everybody likes it when somebody trusts Him. You know, and somebody exhibit, uh, or somebody uh, puts trust in them. Everybody, everybody likes that. In the same way, God is. God's the same way. He likes it whenever you trust Him. Yeah. And you say, man, i got nothing to stand upon except God. Yeah. You know, either, either God's Word is true or, or I'm not going to receive and I'm going to do without. And so when you put your trust in God, you'll find out that He always comes through. He always comes through. Amen? Yeah. Whenever you put your trust in Him. And so, if we expect God to do a little... <laughs> He'll do a little. We expect him to do a lot. He'll do a lot. And you know, a parent loves to do good things for their children. Yes. You know, and you think of your children, you think about what you would like to do. And God's our Heavenly Father. He wants to do good things for you. 
He sees your life, he sees your needs, and he wants to meet those needs, yet he also, he expects something out of you. Yeah. And so when my children got to be older, I had certain expectations for them, you know? And I, I was glad to supply their needs, but, you know, I expected them to, to make their grades and, and do what they're supposed to do and, and serve God and all those types of things. And so God has good things, yet he also makes us exercise our faith to be able to receive. Yeah. But, you know, some folks think, well, God is moved by their whining and their complaining. Yeah. And the more they gripe and complain, the more eager God is to help them. Yes. But, you know, just the opposite is true. God's not moved by whining and complaining and griping. As a matter of fact, it turns him off. Because most folks, if you look at most Christians, their lives are blessed, yet they don't see it. Their lives are blessed, yet they whine and complain, you know, just some little something or whatever. And they forget about all the good things that, that God has done for them. And they think, well, if I just whine and complain, God's going to meet my need. No, God meets the needs of those who trust him and they exercise their faith. Praise God. And when I see with the eyes of faith, I unlock the promises of God. There's thousands of promises in the word of God. And the keys to getting your heirs, your Prayers answered, first of all, is to find a promise in the Word of God where God promises you the thing that you've asked for. Yeah. And if you can find a promise and you can claim it because you know that that is God's will for you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And so when I pray, I don't just pray, but I find some scriptures that promise me the thing that I'm asking for. I don't just pray, but I also speak those scriptures. Yeah. Amen? If I'm praying for divine protection... Hey, I may ask God to protect me, but I start quoting the 91st Psalm. Yeah. I start quoting the promise of God over that situation. Yeah. Amen. That there is a promise there, and I remind God of His Word. Yeah. It's not that He needs reminding. I'm the one who needs to be reminded. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't need to be reminding, but I'm saying, God, this is what you promised yeah. for your children. Yeah. And so I'm claiming it. I'm claiming the covenant that you yeah. promised for your children. Yeah. Come on, when my kids were, were growing up, they, they would remind me of my promises. And so you have to be careful as to the promises that you make because your kids will remind you of those promises. Well, God's made a lot of promises, but he doesn't care if you remind him or not because he has no lack of finances or power or healing or anything else. And so you remind him of his promises. The promises of God are like blank checks just waiting to be cashed. You don't have a credit card and... It kind of irritates me because this credit card company, about once a month, they send me a bunch of checks and say, you know, these checks are good for $20,000. Just write them out to yourself or, or whatever. And they'll just go right on your account. And it's a good thing I don't need the money, you know, or I would be tempted. But then these are just blank checks waiting. You can make them out to anybody. You can go down to the bank and get $20,000 if you want to. What I do with those checks, I tear them up in little shreds because they also come with an interest rate. Come on, but God's checks are not like that. Come on. They're checks that have no interest rate with them. They're checks that are made out to you. Come on, you cash them with your, your faith and you cash them by claiming the promises of God. Promises for finances, promises for healing, promises for guidance, promises for protection, promises for parents, promises for children, promises for anything that you need. God has made them, and you receive them by faith, and you cash that check, and you say, thank you, God. I receive that in my behalf. Amen. Praise God. Now, a promise is only as good as the one who made it. And there's some folks that make a lot of promises, but they're not able to keep them. And so I try really hard not to make promises that I don't intend to keep. Because right. I've learned that people expect you to keep them. And you want your word to be true. And so God has made a lot of promises, but they're all good because he's able to keep them. He has unlimited resources and power. Come on, he's awake 24 hours a day. He sees everything. He controls everything. And he's able to make any promise good in your life. Praise God. When I see with the eyes of faith, my dreams become a reality. Yeah. Faith turns dreams into reality. Yeah. And the Bible is full of stories of people who dream. Abraham dreamed of being a father 
of many nations. Moses dreamed of, of freeing a nation and freeing his people. Joseph dreamed of rising to power. God has put dreams in your heart. And the Bible says that he can do more than you could ask or think. One translation says God can do more than you can even dream of. Right. Come on. Yeah. Whatever your dream is, you know. I don't know whatever your dream is. But whatever your dream is, God is able to do more than anything that you can dream. And he wants to do it. And it will happen if you can release your faith in, in, in God. Amen? Amen. And so I believe when we get to heaven, we'll have regrets for things that we didn't do that we could have done if we would had more faith and believed God. We'll have regrets for things that we were not, that we could have been if we'd had faith in God. Amen? And so we want to see what God has for us and develop our faith so that we're able to receive. And so this campaign starts next Sunday, and we're going to have home groups all over the area that will be meeting uh, at different different days, different times during the week, anytime except uh, Sunday morning and Wednesday night.